There are some new simulations of the Titan sub implosion that I want to show you that offer different root causes. I've also been receiving numerous questions this week about potential cracks in the Ocean Gate Titan submersible viewport window. This is this porthole right here made out of acrylic. I also want to show you some video that you might not have seen. Seattle based Como News who did a 2018 story showing some video of when they were putting together the Titan submersible. So this will give us some more interesting video to see. Dr. Ronald Wagner is a PhD in engineering, and he did this a couple of simulation videos here on his YouTube channel, and I'll put a link to that down below for you as well. But let's take a look at it here. He offers us two different possible scenarios for implosion. All right, so let's take a look at his four second video clip here, and then I'll slow it down and we'll show you what's really happening. So here during the implosion, it comes in in the middle where there's no titanium rings to support it. Now here in slow motion, I want to prove to us whether or not the five occupants would have seen any part of this implosion at all. So looking at how our sexy eyes see the world and when we go to receive an image, it takes about 13 milliseconds to see an image. Everything takes time. All of that light has to enter our lens and it has to travel through our eye and through the retina in the back where it gets into the brain and the brain is rather slow. If you're lazy like me, you got a slow brain, it can take a while. So that's why it takes about 13 milliseconds to process. You know, the Lord blessed us with some very uh, incredible machines that are, are very complex systems. Our bodies can sense a whole lot of things and our bodies can see and sense things going on all around us. But it does take that few milliseconds of time to process all of this information. Okay, now if we step through here frame by frame, I'm looking at this total timestamp here, and I don't know if that's in milliseconds. I'm just going to call it milliseconds. I'm assuming that's what he's doing it. So I'm gonna call this, for example, 24 milliseconds. So as we step up here and start getting closer to around 30 milliseconds in here, that's where it starts to crack on the surface. There's that 31 milliseconds. So from there until, let's go to 33 milliseconds or so. There's 32, there's 33. We're right about the halfway point where the center is now one half the diameter at the middle there. So anybody sitting in the middle would have been dead already in, in this time frame right here, about three milliseconds after it started. And then here we are at 34 and 35. There's 35 milliseconds. So basically just a couple of milliseconds later, it's already starting to be in hundreds of pieces and the entire center's collapsed. And remember, they can only sit right here to where the ring is. They could probably come right up to the dome. May or may not have been somebody sitting in the dome. There was probably somebody sitting right here. Probably nobody beyond that point. So as we go there, you know, here we are at 37 milliseconds already. So it's completely gone now. It's just completely disintegrated. And the continuing pressure now is going to force both of these domes slightly towards each other. I don't know if he's going to, yeah, he does show it here. And then of course, most likely here, they're showing that the acrylic porthole window gets wiped off along with all of the bolts that were securing the uh, retaining ring to the titanium dome. Dr. Wagner also showed us a second scenario where the root cause was the porthole window blowing in. So here he didn't show the full simulation, but he does show some of the major screenshots of it as he steps through it and listen to his explanation. I have prepared here a CAD model of the Titan. You can see here the Titan hemispheres, the acryl window and the CFRP cylinder. You can see in this simulation that the window fractured and then the debris of the window damage the inside of the cylinder. Now I want you to take a look at this video here. This is from Asgit Industries. This young lady did a modeling of the Titan sub and the implosion. She uploaded this a couple of days ago and this is just brilliant in its detail. Check this out. So she did a good job showing a nice colorful model and even the lighting models on here are pretty nice. It shows the occupants inside there as well. And then she broke up and showed where all the different recovered wreckage pieces are located on the craft. That was a nice touch on here that I don't recall seeing on any of the other videos. For scale, let's add in the five mannequins. 
Now in this implosion, you would not be able to see things bending or starting to fail. Here's an example of how fast it would be in a split second with a countdown clock. So this was a nicely detailed video. Make sure you watch her whole video though. It's really cool. It's only about three minutes, but she shows in there um, in, in the modeling how the carbon fiber is joined with the titanium ring there. And she'll show you close up with the forces acting on it, how it's separating the joints. Alan XL Mundo is a YouTube star that's got about 3 million subscribers or so. And he went on the Titanic expedition with Ocean Gate on the Titan last year in 2022. And he was able to get some of the most incredible video and close up shots of the Titan of anybody that I've seen yet. Stockton Rush walking around the Titan. And you'll see a good close up shot here also of the porthole. So, what's the material of that? Uh, it's acrylic, plexiglass. Wow. Yeah, and it is uh, weighs about 80 pounds. And when we go to the Titanic, it will squeeze in about three quarters of an inch. It just deforms. The acrylic's great because it squeezes in, and before it cracks or fails, it starts to, to crackle. And so you get a huge warning if it's going to fail. Well, unfortunately, I don't think they got much of a warning the day of the Titan sub implosion. Well, praise God that Alan survived that exhibition and came back alive, because who knows, that could have been him. But I'll put a link to the, his full video down in the video description below. You gotta go check it out. He's got a lot of really great close-up video and cool shots of his expedition down to the Titanic wreck site. Now, if you look at the bottom of the porthole window here that I got off the Ocean Gate website, you can see those sort of look like cracks. I don't know if they are or not, or if it's just the way the water is reflecting. I mean, who knows? Okay, so this is the picture of the Ocean Gate Titan submarine viewport. So this porthole opening here where the window is, you can see what looks to be cracks at the bottom. Now this is an original picture that I got off of the Ocean Gate website before they shut down. This is not a doctored photo of any type. It's not something I got off of TikTok or anything else. So this is the original unretouched photo. Here, I've taken that same picture into Photoshop and I've enhanced it. And so now I'm going to zoom in on it and we'll take a closer look at these cracks and try to see what's going on. So now as we zoom in here for a closer look, it's really hard to tell if these are scratches or not. I mean, they sort of look like scratches, but you know, sometimes reflective properties of acrylic and glass and water and all that, they do strange things. I mean, just look at those wavy mirrors at the circus. Look how they, warp the image so it's undeterminate but here's a video that was shot in 2018 as part of a video i'm going to show you a little bit later on i put it in slow motion here for you it almost looks like there's cracks all around it there right and but yet when you look at it from the inside you don't really see anything so sometimes light can just play all sorts of mind games with you it's really hard to tell you'd almost have to be right in front of it and walk around it from all different angles to be able to tell if there was any cracks on it Next, here's a little bit more of that video from Alan XL Mundo showing Stockton Rush walking around the Titan submersible, showing us some of the stuff and items that we haven't seen before. So this is what's referred to as syntactic foam. Syntactic foam is foam that doesn't compress under pressure. So we got the aft dome here. This is another three and a quarter inch thick titanium dome uh, bolted to uh, another titanium piece glued to the carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is coated with rhino liner which is sort of what the military is. It stops uh, water penetration at high pressure into the carbon fiber. Typically weight this up very heavily to get down. And you drop, we'll load uh, six weights in there and we'll drop four of them to get back to the surface. If that system fails, so you had a complete electrical failure and you can't activate those things, this is a hydraulic cylinder that goes into the cabin and there's a hand pump, 10,000 PSI hand pump. So all you gotta do is open a valve and you pump this and it pushes a pin and this whole system drops off. So this, and all of this and all the lead down here can be dropped in an absolute emergency um, so you can get to the surface. Now this is what has me nervous folks because he's talking about this little hand pump inside the cylinder there and that's another ingress in there. That's another little thing that you have to seal. So now I'm wondering, okay, could this be another possible root cause here? Another way that water could sneak in. So, you know, knowing the construction that they've done on this Titan sub so far is how well a job did they seal that connection that comes in there? And then while they were down there, did they run into a problem and decided they weren't coming up fast enough and now let's try using that pump and did that open up another set of problems for them as well? So uh, We have three external HD cameras. Down here we have the 4K camera. 
And so it's four total cameras externally. And one sonar, yes. And oh yes, does this bring up another question for me because I've been wondering since day one, hey, what about these cameras and GoPros that are all over the place? And I know people inside are probably well documenting everything. Now we know that it, because of the implosion, probably everything got destroyed, but did it really? Is it possible that maybe a little GoPro camera survived? Or what about the cameras on the outside? And maybe they were part of that gear that you saw them lift up out of the boat when they brought all of the Titan wreckage back to the shore in Canada and they hoisted it up there and we saw all of that is there a camera in there the other thing too is that you know what supposing they find somebody's phone or a camera and it's all mangled up and everything if you can still get to the sd card chances are maybe it survived and then what if other cameras were recording and maybe they were recording onto chips on the board if the chip is still in good shape you can unsolder that circuit chip off of the printed circuit board and take it and put it on another known good board and then get it to work and retrieve the photos that way. I used to do stuff like this as an electrical engineer for Motorola many years ago, where I could go into the lab and we could spot target one integrated circuit chip on the board, apply some heat, and then use suction to pull it up off of the board. And we could repopulate a new one on there and apply the heat and reflow that chip. And next thing you know, you've got a fully functioning board. Now here's a video that you might not have seen yet. This was shot in 2018 by Como News Channel 4 in Seattle of the Ocean Gate Titan sub when it was under construction. I saw it was a lot of pain to get here. We did this extremely fast. The strength, weight, and buoyancy that we get out of it exceeds really any other material out there. Remember, keep your questions coming because we'll answer as many as we can over the coming days. And thank you so much for joining us, folks, and we'll see all of you on the next one.